We're ready. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to the regular meeting of Hamilton City Council for January 25th, 2023. We're here in City Council Chambers on High Street in Hamilton. Uh, we do have two public hearings this evening. One involves a substantial amendment to the annual action plan and the second public meeting involves an historic designation of a street on Main Street. Of a building on Main Street, I'm sorry. Uh, roll call please. Pullman? Yes. Fear? Present, I meant, sorry. Present. <laughs> Vaughn? Present. Ryan? Here. Nab? Present. Lauer? Present. Moeller? Present. That is a quorum. Thank you. We're going to start off with offering a prayer by Council Member Eric Pullman, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand if you are able. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we come today asking for your guidance, wisdom, and support as we begin this meeting. Lord, as always, we ask you to watch over our firefighters, our police officers, and all other first responders, that they may return home safely after each day. We ask you, Lord, to watch over all the athletes this weekend, keep them healthy, and let them show good sportsmanship. We also ask you to watch over our Bengals as they defeat Kansas City Chiefs and travel to Arizona to win Super Bowl 57. We believe in you and our Bengals, who day and amen. Amen. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We do have a couple of special presentations this evening. Okay, first up, Joel. Somebody's yelling in Carly, I think. We're going to yes. recognize. Is that right? Let's go yes, down there Carly and recognize Christian. Her. Let's go down there and recognize her. We're going to go out and put you out. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I had a chance to meet this young lady on Monday of this week, and she volunteered to go door to door taking flyers for the North Hamilton Crossing meeting, you know, in, in cold weather, just walking around the neighborhood passing out flyers. Joel, why don't you just tell us some more about it? So, Carly Christian is a part of our 17 Strong Youth Group that Ty Smallwood put together. Uh, we have a representative from each neighborhood in the city of Hamilton, and Carly, what neighborhood do you represent? Rossville. The Rossville neighborhood. Um, this was something, this group tries to go out into our community, engage in civic activities. They do some things together. Many of our city officials come in and they express their concern or they express their feelings about issues that are going on. Uh, and many of the officials here have been here and they, they have been listened to. They bring up tough questions. Uh, they bring up great ideas, which we have fulfilled some of those ideas. But this was a unique opportunity. Unfortunately, we got snowed out on Sunday, and we're unable to get the whole group together. At the last minute, we tried to uh, organize a, another run at this. And we went around uh, the north end on the potential pass that the North Hampton Crossing may go through. And uh, Carly went door to door with me. Um, this was a new experience for her, and I think it helped you learn, and I think it helped you develop some confidence in some of the things that, that you do. Um, she was very, very, very engaged with our citizens, trying to explain and help them get information that, regarding our public meeting that we had this, this past week. Um, your efforts were very important to the city, and your engagement, I hope, continues throughout the rest of your life in the city of Hamilton. Um, your mother and father have been lifelong residents, and I hope that you continue to stay in our, in our city. You make it better. I found her to be a, a very pleasant, intelligent, full of energy young lady. Because of that, we've got a proclamation for you here, a certificate. City of Hamilton, Ohio. This is certified at Carly Christian. It's hereby awarded a certificate of recognition for civic participation for the betterment of her city. Signed this 25th day of January, 2023, by myself as mayor, by Councilman Joel Lauer, acknowledged by all members of council. So, 
this is a small token of our appreciation for you stepping up, going door to door, uh, educating our, our residents about North Hamilton Crossing. So, you've heard a lot from Joel, a little bit from me. Do you want to say anything to this crowd here? Uh, come on. <laughs> she wasn't this quiet on Monday. <laughs> Location update by Rich Engel, our Director of Engineering. Good evening, Mayor, Council, citizens of Hamilton. Congratulations. This is the uh, single story building at its new site and, uh, on Maple Avenue. So, next steps. The block walls to support the single story building are currently being laid. Um, <clears throat> we're going to have to add cold weather protection to continue the block laying and also to allow the uh, mortar to cure properly. Remember, this will be a immediate loading on the support walls once the buildings are lowered. So we have to make sure that the mortar is cured to the full 28, <coughs> excuse me, 28 day strength. And uh, that'll be for the two story building, that'll be sometime in mid February. And for the uh, single story, it'll probably be sometime in March. Uh, we did receive the executed CSX bill of sale. Remember we had submitted that nearly a year ago now and uh, they were not going to execute it from their part until the uh, buildings were completely moved. I will be uh, developing a cost update in the near future. Uh, we used a lot of gravel to uh, get the buildings moved, uh, as well as the uh, CSX engineering and flagging costs are now more identified, and it appears we're going to have probably in the order of twenty dollars to $25,000 savings from CSX. They, they really didn't have to do as much uh, flagging operation as they had anticipated in their initial estimate. And then uh, once the uh, masons get out of the way, I'm going to get the roofs evaluated and see what kind of costs we're going to be looking at for those. That's the extent of my report tonight. Do you have any questions? Any questions or comments? Let me say thank you, Rich, for putting on your expertise and <coughs> experience into coordinating this. and. Uh, Thank you. I have told many people my story, and that is I got the right professionals involved and I got out of their way, so it went very well. <laughs> Mr. Mayor. Please. Rich, I, it, I was going to say it was neat to watch you. <laughs> you were very proud of doing that, and you should have been, because whether you like this project or not, like I said before, you, you, you guys did a, you pulled something off that was really unique and different, and your whole team did a great job. and. I mean, you have to be proud of that. And I know you were proud running around there. I, I was kind of watching you a lot too. I said, like, "Look at him out there; he's just taking control." But it, that was it, that was you know, it was neat to see that. So thank you very much, and everybody that did what they could do. And I think it's uh, with that kind of uh, dedication and commitment, I think we can get somebody in it pretty quick. Yep. So. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. That takes care of special presentations. We now go to audience of citizens. Individuals who wish to make comments may speak during this part of the agenda or uh, wait until that particular part of the agenda when the item is up for a vote on council floor. All individuals who attempt to address council are required to sign in at the uh, table in the back of the room with this blue public speaking book. Each speaker is allowed up to five minutes. Um, our first speaker is Jim Lottman.
Good evening, Mayor, Councilman, and people on the board up here. Uh, yeah, I'm Jim Monoman at um, a new address is um, 544 Franklin Street. And um, anyway, um, I um, okay, I, I, um, I live over on Franklin Street, and you come down here to cut on, turn on G Street to get over to Ross. Okay, turn right at Ross, but the thing is, their cars are parked. You know, our parking we are parked fine, but so during you know, the evening time, someone's parked in a park where you can't park in front of the side. No parking here, there's the corner. You know. and, and I complain on many times, and the police have done nothing for that crap. Why is that? Do you have any other comments that you wish to share with us at this time? Yes. Also, um, I park in a Barney's bar too, and they're sending a Barney's bar parked. You know, half of the parks, signs of no parking in my and the cars parking that park, you know, where they can't park like that. You know, they're not supposed to park like that. A barney bar. Okay. But we'll keep an eye on, on the parking situations and, 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 and that turn. Uh, and also, there's a bunch of them, also a bunch of them, places over in Ninnewall, too, right? I mean, you know, they park real close, real cl I mean, three feet away from the um, parking, from the, from, the, um, from the curb. You're not supposed to park that close to the curb. We'll keep our eyes on, on vehicles that aren't where they should be in the uh, parking lanes. Uh, we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. And also, um, uh, uh, why, why don't the police ever come? I mean, I've called them four times and they never come. They never, never do anything about it. They have to, to list a certain priority of call that they have to go to at times. So it can't take some time, but you got to realize they've got a lot of calls for service and they've got to go to ones which have uh, person, person's health involved or, or potential property damage and the like. So they're, they're doing their job. We're blessed to have professionals in our city like we have right now with police and fire. Okay? Okay, well, thank you. I just want to say about that because I was very dangerous like that for parking. Come on. I'll keep an eye on it as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. Have a good night. You too. Tim Anderson? Yes. <clears throat> I wanted to talk to you guys about the parking on Main Street. Okay. I'm in the 700 block. First off, you didn't, I, I should probably have your address here. 708 Main. 708 Main? Okay. And I've been there 43 years. In that time period, from my house two doors up, there's been 12 cars totaled in that three house area. So we all started parking on the curb to give us a little bit of room uh, to let people get by. And of course, somebody called the police. They came out and ticketed everybody. They didn't give them a ticket ticket. They gave them a warning. That's the only option we have to keep from getting hit. If we park in the alley where Park Avenue Methodist Church is, they break into your car. And most of the garages in that area were built for the horse and buggy days. They're not big enough for a car. And all we're asking you guys is to let us park on the curb. I mean, I see it all over Hamilton, but I guess the only time you get a ticket is when somebody calls. I had a guy take the mirror off the side of my car. I just went in the house and came out, and my mirror was in the front yard of my house. He left his behind as well, but, and you know, when you sit in, when I sit in my car facing the business district up the street, I get scared to death because I'm looking in the rearview mirror, and when they come over Dick Avenue, there's a hill, there's a little bump there, and they come over that bump and they go to the right. And if you're not careful, if they don't compensate that, the first car parked gets hit. And mine used to be the first one in a row. I'm in the fourth house up on the right, but you know, all we're asking is just to be able to park on it in, in a little bit in the grass, because you know, 12 cars, guys, that's a lot. My neighbor up the street had two brand new trucks totaled in a month. Two brand new trucks. So he parked in the back, he's a DJ, they broke into his truck, stole all his stuff. So that's all we're asking, you know, in that that three house area to park on the curb because if not 
you know, we get hit. The guy across the street's truck got hit so hard by a girl in a Subaru, it knocked it up into the neighbor's front yard. And she spun out and almost hit my car on the other side of the street. I'm, I'm just sitting here thinking and picturing what you're saying. Is there any other solution besides well, parking on the grass? Or just, the just, well, I always parked on a curb, but then I wanted to get a few more inches, so I was parking right on the other side of the curb, not on a sidewalk not six or eight inches from the sidewalk, but maybe three or four inches off the curb, the width of the tire off the curb. But I, I called the mayor's office when my trailblazer got totaled three years ago, see if they could put a sign at each end, you know, high accident area, of course. I don't think it was you, mayor, but somebody said, well, I'll call the police department and have them check the records. Well, I, <laughs> I knew that wasn't gonna do anything because, you know, it's not like there's 30 wrecks there a month. So all we, me and the guys across the street, all we want to do is park off of the curb without getting, you know, and I've been parking that way for three years, but somebody called the police on the guy across the street and they ticketed everybody. Just a warning ticket. Well, you, you presented an issue and a problem to us. Why don't you let us kind of think about that a little bit as to how to make it safer, less accidents, hopefully keep the vehicles off the curbs, but let, let us, Take a look at that. Mr. Mayor. Please. Uh, if, if it would be helpful, we could probably have our traffic engineering division go out and take a look at it, see if there's, I don't know how much uh, tree lawn there is, but um, you know maybe there's a way to look at widening or, or other methods of parking down there, and we could probably have somebody at least take a look at it. I'm not sure that there's a, a solution uh, right now, but somebody could at least take a look at it. You've got our attention, Mr. Wormann, uh is, is very high up in city administration, and uh, he's going to look at it. He's how, how do they get? It. How do they get back to me, or do they? Well, I'll tell you what. Can you somebody give him the card of either Rich or you tend to give him a card? Yes, sir, right here. Give the card. Reach out to me. I'll connect you. Okay. Daniel took okay. care of it. Daniel took care of it. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Thank you, guys. Okay. Steve Schlagbaum. Okay, so you're okay. I think we got you next, Jermaine. Good evening. Good evening. Um, Jermaine Summerhour, um, residence at um, 722 Gordon Smith. Um, Work residence at 867 Central Avenue, Plush Cut Barbershop. Um, <clears throat> I'm basically here to address the city and the city council about um, an upcoming event that I would like to try to plan for for the kids um, called Kid City Youth Activity Day. Um, I've been putting on events and stuff for the public for the last past eight and a half years. Um, this year, I would like to see if I can get um, some help in designing that and efforts in getting people to come out. And also hopefully um, the city can open up its calendar book so we can make this one of the um, best activity days that the city has to offer for the kids, for health, businesses, and um, a positive outlook for the youth. Um, my job and focus is of the city and for the city is to basically bring better conversation, better um, opportunities for people who may not be able to get to certain services that the city may offer or may not know. Um, also, to be able to break the language gap um, with new people coming in, people from different ethnic ethnicities and ethnic backgrounds coming into our city um, so we can have um, kids talking to each other, being more diverse with each other. Um, and showing that Hamilton is engaged with our youth and our committee from 17 strong within the 17 boundaries of the city and also um, focusing on more at risk kids to have a positive light and an influence in the city. So I would like to see if the city can open up its um, calendar book on events and to be able to select 
um, a day um, for that event, and so we can get that rolling and get that promoted and, and trying to get um, this vision out there to the public. I don't do, I'm going to work it this way. We want to see you be a success in this event. Uh, it sounds like it's a, a great mission statement of what you want to accomplish. Why don't you look at your calendar and see how much time it's going to take for you to put that together the way you want to put it together. We can talk to the Chamber of Commerce folks and others who've got community calendars and see if it matches the date that you've picked out. Okay. I mean, I can't tell you right now exactly what's being planned in well, July, would, would like, August, September. What, what time frame are you talking about? Um, I would like to be in the summer or towards the end of summer. Um, so that way, like I said, it's an outside activity. So one of the bases is for the community is that I do is, is that um, I bring motorcycles, low rider cars, trucks, and everything like that. Like last year, I had planned um, three on three basketball challenge, obstacle course. I had a car show parade with bikes and motorcycles showed up. Free medical services, social services, free lawyer advice from legal aid from around here. Um, therapists that came out to talk to the public. I had doctors free to examine people of the public that wanted free services. They got that. Also, all the food that was provided and cooked and provided was all free to the public. Um, kids won awards. We gave out awards for those participants who donated money and the category 17 Strong um, was presented with an award from my um, nonprofit group for being in that statue of being um, a recipient of being a donor from their um, grant, micro grant program. So I was a recipient of that and I gave back to that. One of the things that I do is that everything that I say that I do and that I can do for the city of Hamilton, for the kids and for the public, I do. So there's no shortcoming. So if you put your money in, I put that money to work. I don't keep none of it. So if you come out and participate, I put that same type of work and effort in. As members and city council know that I'm that type of person that I, I'm a stickler on what I do and what I say that I do. Only thing I would ask of the public and city council is to be able to help me move forward. Why don't you look at a date that you think is going to work for you, mm -hmm. contact our Department of Neighborhoods, contact the Chamber of Commerce, and let's just see what else is going on that particular weekend. Okay. I think that's, I mean, you come up with a date that you think is going to work for you, and then let's look at the calendars then. <clears throat> okay. I think it's a great idea. I mean, uh, thanks for coming to Council and giving us an idea of, of what you have going on, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be there and, and, and we'll try and work with you to make this a, another great event in Hamilton. I thank you for your time, Mr. and I Mayor, really appreciate it. Mr. Mayor, before you, before you leave the podium, tell us, and I recall when you visited with us prior, and remind us, where do you have, what, what venue, where do you hold this event? Um, I held these venues at several different places. Um, one that I normally hold was at um, Bailey Square, Second Ward in Hamilton. Um, that's where it all started from. Then I had one program at 4th Street Park. Then um, the last program that I did for the youth and the kids and community was at the Booker T. Washington Community Center. Um, so this year, again, I'm aiming for the Booker T. Washington Community Center um, just because of the scope of the ground and many different type of activities that I can hold there. Um, so it's more um, activity friendly, base use, and also um, it can hold the influx of cars, motorcycles, and outside gatherings um, to, that, to that extent. Is there any questions, anything from uh, council? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lauer. Jermaine, I, I know that you do many, you and SJ do many projects down there, and a lot of times they go unnoticed because of your selflessness. Um, I want to make sure that you know that we are thankful for everything that you do try to do from your Christmas drive to this project here. And I think you do a wonderful job, and you're, you are a great mentor to many kids in that neighborhood, and I am the council is very appreciative of the things that you attempt to do. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, and it's just in case people or the public and also city council um, may not be aware of, my barbershop and I and my colleague, um, Rashawn Jarrett, um, we're very engaged, involved in our community. Um, we do a book youth um, read every year. Also, we do a um, community-based um, half-price or free cuts for the kids in the community as we give them gifts and free lunches and things of that nature every year. Also, we do a um, 
<clears throat> a toy drive every year, which we also donate food boxes. We do what is called like an angel tree, but we reach out to social services, and these social services come back to us with families that are in need. Um, and so we try to fulfill those wish lists for those families. Um, for the last past three years that we started the, the, um, the adopt a family, we have been able to help over 50 families within the last past three years um, with a stifling of $200 per family. So that's all, that was our limit per family. We gave 200 per family. And within three years, we were able to help over 50 families. Um, with the food boxes, within the last past two years, we fed over 35 families that were in need. Um, we gave over $5,847 within gifts and toys and necessities, soap, water, um, deodorant, toothbrushes, um, to the families that are in need during those holidays. So when I say that, I, when I stump on your door or ask your business for help, um, every penny goes for that help. So like I said, again, I don't keep any of the money. What you give me is what I put out. And what I put out is basically a thank you for the community and helping and serving those individuals who are needing help in our community. Well, uh, you come up with that date, we'll start comparing calendars and, and we want to see you succeed for the benefit of our citizens. Mr. Mayor. Thank you again Mr. for your Burnett, time. I'm going to give you my card, Jermaine. Yes, sir. And please give me a call. I'll help you collaborate with all of the different entities that might be able to work through this and come up with dates and things at the Booker T. Washington Community Center. Okay? Yes, thank you. Yes, sir. And thank you again for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hey, we actually have Jeremy Culver and Rick Meyer on the public hearing, not the public hearing, but the, uh, the audience of citizens. You want to speak during our caucus agenda, I feel sure. So we'll wait until then. I want you to know that we know that you're here, and we'll have you up there in just a little bit. I've got Matthew, uh, is it Thornton? That's a tough act to follow. Um, three, four, five, uh, Hanover Street. Um, First, I have to change it up a little bit because I did email the mayor eight days ago. You did just email me um, at six minutes before the meeting. So I did. You're right. I just so, didn't know that you were the same person yep. behind. So it does make, does make you look a little bit better. <laughs> you, don't, you don't go by your name on your email. Correct. So, All right. So um, I wanted to first say that uh, I'm just going to read my email. Um, I wanted to first say that I'm always excited to see Hamilton doing good. And it seems like the city has been doing good for a while. And I wanted to give that as a compliment. Uh, I went to a council meeting in December, and in public participation, I did say I was proud of Hamilton, and the clerk is a great employee, along with the ladies and the one gentleman in the lobby. I stopped in. It's still, you can't access any of the services. It's still behind locked doors. Um, but I did do a public records request, and the clerk did um, oblige me. He followed the law, which a lot of governments do not do. So that was great. Um, however... Uh, I came across Hamilton in a slightly negative manner uh, approximately a week ago. I attend my Butler County Board of Health meetings every month. Uh, and self-admittedly, I'm somewhat of a watchdog. I speak at every meeting, and I do a lot of public records requests. As a mayor, I'm sure you know the type of constituent I am, and I'm not a fun constituent. Uh, but I do believe I'm a fair constituent, and I firmly believe in improving local cities and communities one is a part of. Um, uh, when I showed up at the local board of health meeting, they had a police officer Can I ask there. A question, uh, yeah. Was this a Hamilton advisory board of health or a Butler County? Butler County, but the problem with Hamilton, they had a Hamilton police officer there for me. Um, he followed me around the whole meeting, up and down. Um, it was in this, was in the county side of this building. No, it's at the. Um, like you turn left off of Main Street, and there, it's Butler County. It has nothing to do with Hamilton, but the officer was, was a Hamilton officer. Um, uh, when I showed up, there was an officer there. Uh, my two main issues with the Board of Health is just that they keep the doors locked. Um, as you guys are aware, that's a sunshine violation, and I'm very vocal about being wrong. Um, I've even showed the yellow book from the Attorney General, 
and I even cited the case law. Uh, I could absolutely fire a memorandum and injunctions and the such, but with sunshine violations, it's impossible to do pro se, and I don't want the county to send, spend thousands or tens of thousands for a lawyer. That is never my intention. Um, however, the police officer was cordial, um, but I asked for a public records request from him, and he said he could not do it, which is, again, against public records. Um, so I would think if Hamilton was going to send an officer to a public meeting, they would send an officer that is trained in that very niche field. Um, again, he was cordial. He did give me his uh, badge number and his name, and uh, I'd give him a 7 out of 10. Then I went to the police station to file the public records request. When I went there, they first wanted my name, which is absolutely wrong. Uh, then they told me I couldn't do a public records request. Come back the next day, go to our, um, our um, records division. Again, that's extremely wrong. If you ask any civil servant, they have to oblige your public records request. They can just take your information, hand it along, and that's it. Um, an officer came over and was nice, but he was unnamed, unbadged, and started talking to me. And uh, he told me one of my public records requests, an email between the officer and the Butler County Commissioner was an invalid public records request, which it absolutely is, because that gives me a little reasoning. Why was there a public officer there? Um, earlier today, you said that the officers are really busy. They don't need to be at a public meeting. There's only one public speaker. I'm very cordial, um, but if they're there, that's fine. I just really hope that um, the city of Hamilton can um, train their officers in public records requests, open meeting laws, stuff like that, because while my stuff isn't that big of a deal, it can be a big of a deal if, if there's um, you know, more of a civil rights issue and stuff like that. The officer also wasn't wearing a body camera, which I believe we're supposed to have all officers. I know they're still coming soon, but it had been really nice to have that information because behind locked doors, I could see the officer's conversation. What did the commissioner say? Why was there an officer there? Then maybe I could follow their logic and I could understand. However, all that stuff's behind locked doors and I can't see it. Thank you. Thank you. That's all I have as far as uh, audience of citizens. So we'll go to the next part of the agenda. That is the consent agenda. It includes all staff reports, caucus reports, and receiving file information. Um, as part of the consent agenda, we have a committee to hold, and that's a presentation of what is on the caucus agenda. Uh, it gives council time to ask questions, provide directions, comment on reports. I'll accept the motion that the regular meeting be recessed, and that committee to hold take place. So moved. Second. Motion by council member Coleman, second by council member Fear. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Hearing none, that motion is carried. At 6:34, we now go into the caucus agenda. Mr. City Clerk, if you'll tell us who's going to be speaking about what on the agenda. Absolutely. So for our first item on the agenda related to concrete repair and resurfacing projects uh, on Pyramid Hill, our first speaker will be our Director of Engineering, Rich Engel. Good evening, Mayor, Council, citizens of Hamilton. If you recall, um, we were approached by the um, ODOT, Ohio Department of Transportation, about doing a resurfacing project on State Route 128. When we do those, we always like to include a, an assessment project to uh, take care of any of the issues with concrete aprons for driveways and also for sidewalks. This is the location of the uh, southerly piece of the project, oh, I'm sorry, it's a northerly piece, um, and then this is the southerly piece, and uh, there's approximately 15 parcels that will have assessments on this project, and also for your information, we had a conversation with ODOT today, and they've agreed to extend the uh, project limits into the intersection with uh, New London Road and, and South B Street. And um, they were very happy to do that so that we're making sure that the resurfacing will be 
complete from uh, in the city of Hamilton from the from that intersection all the way south. So that was that was good news today. Uh, city of Hamilton will we'll pay our fair share on it, but they'll also pick up their share as well. Are there any uh, questions on the assessment piece? Any questions? Thank you, Rich. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, next up for agenda item number two uh, will be our Executive Director of Internal Services, Tim Wortman. <clears throat> Uh, good evening. This is uh, relatively simple. Uh, we're requesting a waiver of advertising for uh, a specific software package, the faster software package. It's utilized by Public Works for fleet maintenance uh, asset management. Uh, it's proprietary software. It's only available through a sole source provider, uh, and our codified ordinances under 17106 allow for a waiver of competitive bidding in the case of a sole source provider. Uh, so at this point, we're just asking for council's concurrence that will allow us to move forward in an expeditious manner that will allow us to upgrade our fleet management software, um, and that is the extent of my report. Thank you. Any questions? Okay. Uh, moving on to agenda items three, six, and uh, three, six, and seven. We'll have our executive director of external services, Tom Vanderhorst. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council, residents, Who Day Nation. <laughs> um, my name is Tom Vanderhorst. I'm the Executive Director of External Services. Uh, tonight, uh, what could be better than one train depot presentation, but two <laughs> train depot presentations? Um, this is a project I'm pretty excited about. Uh, Rick Meyer and Jeremy Culver from Meyer Brother and Sons are here. They're going to speak after this brief presentation. Um, this is a project that council agreed to assume. We're getting ready to close on this. This is the property, as you'll recall. It's a swap for the um, pole yard out on uh, 3rd Street that we annexed into the city. We're very soon going to take possession of this, and we kind of wanted to get this locked and loaded and ready to go because these guys have been really patient with this project. I think you're going to see it's a pretty exciting project. Uh, this is going to be a uh, sales and development agreement for 1000 Maple Avenue. This is what the project looks like now, and I'm here to tell you all those ugly green doors are coming down. So this is uh, their presentation. It's kind of hard to see here, um, but this is some of the work that my brother and sons have done, and this is sort of a, a site plan. So I'm going to go ahead and invite Jeremy and Rick to come on up here and say a few words about their project. Thanks, Tom. Um, I'd first like to apologize. I didn't know I was supposed to wear my Bengal gear, so next time <laughs> I'll be much more prepared. Um, yeah, thanks for having us. Uh, Tom asked us just to share a couple things about uh, this proposed project. Um, the initial investment we're looking at, at this, the which would in, in, entail the perimeter of uh, fencing, so tearing, taking down those green doors, adding a, a nicer fence, uh, brick and aluminum. Um, and then securing the exterior of the building, and then building out our portion of the space. The building's roughly 18,000 square feet. We're hoping to occupy 11,500 of it, um, and so and build that out immediately. And then the remaining 6,500 we're hoping to lease out um, to some future tenant we don't know. So that in, initial investment's going to be over a million dollars. Um, in depend on when you know we get the key, so to speak. That should happen this year. Uh, we currently have 28 employees uh, in our business. Um, and so obviously we'll be relocating our entire uh, business there uh, to this location and we've added we added eight jobs last year um, and we already got one new this year so we hope to continue that trend of, of building our business which is um, also building the community um, our hope with this space um, it, like you said it's kind of tough to see there but is the long section is going to be a showroom um, space so we sell custom cabinetry um, a lot of what we do which some of you know um, is custom millwork and cabinetry uh, we've done a lot of work around town um, we've done a lot of work at, at the tavern uh, in Berkeley we've done a Westover um, we've done work at the Fitton Center some cabinetry up there um, so 
a big part of our, our business is that. So we'll have a showroom of that um, showing there. Then the rest of that will be office space. So about 3,000 square foot, more class A type space. And then in the back, um, the kind of the big ub ugly monster that they put on the back in probably the 70s or 80s, that'll be warehouse uh, and manufacturing space for our cabinets and finishing for those cabinets. Uh, and then we'll have a storage and loading area. Then off to the right is where we'll have that additional leased space. Um, and um, and lastly, just kind of a, I wanted to talk briefly kind of like a, a broad overview of what we're really excited about. Uh, my dad came to Hamilton in roughly 88 um, for opportunity and really work environment. Um, he came, became friends with a man named Jeff Thurman who was a president at the time of, uh, I think it was Colonial at that time. Right. And, um, and then from there, we did a lot of work with them in the commercial side and also a lot of work residentially. So as a business, we do work all over the city. We do, we're right now involved in all the way up north of Dayton, down to northern Kentucky, uh, the east side, the west side, working on a custom house in Oxford right now. Um, we've done work in the city. Um, Jeremy's specifically been responsible for the Fitton House, um, which is Fort Hamilton Hospital, which is across the street from the library. That was a beautiful restoration project that we had the, um, the opportunity um, to help restore that, that building, uh, which turned out really well. And we're also working currently on Buckeye, uh, duplex on Buckeye Street and bidding some other projects. So, anything I missed? Yeah. No, I think just to add to briefly what Rick said, um, you know, Meyer Brothers has been a Hamilton-based company for 43, almost 45 years, but never been rooted in the downtown core of Hamilton. And with everything that's happening in the city, like it just makes us really excited to be a part of it. And, and we've got people in our business that they care about community. <clears throat> and we, Rick's worked with Serve City uh, on that east side of, of Hamilton and, and just being able to be put into that um, Maple Avenue corridor I think is really exciting for us uh, to see what can happen in terms of over the next few years as we move in and we hopefully foster that sense of just uh, revitalization. Um, we remodel homes. Uh, we look forward to remodeling this historic, you know, train station, freight house. I mean, it's, it's a gorgeous building. It was about this time last year, I drove past it and I called Rick. I'm like, Rick, I've been driving past this freight house for years. I'm like, have you ever seen it? He's like, yeah, I have. I'm like, because we're both trained in architecture and just always have an eye for, you know, historic cool buildings. And I was like, we need to find out who owns that thing. And we need to figure out how to move there. And it wasn't shortly thereafter that we were connected with Tom, found out through Mike Dingledine that Neil Cohen had it, and there was this swap happening. And so uh, it was just really neat timing. Um, and so it's been just marinating in our heads over the past year as we've been you know, talking with Tom. And, and we're just really excited about uh, being in the core of what's happening here. So, yeah, I think that's... Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, from a building perspective, we're excited. From a community perspective, we're excited. Uh, you might have noticed that we sponsored the Hamilton Thanksgiving 5K this yep. year. Um, like Jeremy mentioned, we, uh, below cost, helped renovate Serve City's bathrooms, which is, in, which is in really bad shape. So we were rubbing shoulders with the community there. So we're very mm -hmm. aware and familiar with that part of East Avenue and Maple. Um, and from a larger design and architectural community, I'm a part of AIA Cincinnati. And the executive director there has even has reached out to me and said, hey, we'd love to come and do an event in Hamilton. We hear all the stuff that's happening um, with all the projects, whether it be spooky and everything in between. And so I just feel like there's a lot of momentum. And quite honestly, growing up here, I never wanted to stay. And we looked for a long time for, for offices outside of Hamilton because yeah. it was more centrally located for our business. But honestly, I feel like in the last couple of years, it's just like, well, we live in Hamilton, we both live in Highland Park, and which just you guys have done such an amazing job over the years, Joshua and, and everybody, it's just, it finally caught my attention, like this is, this is actually where I wanna be. I've been here, I never left, and my, actually my heart is here now too. So really appreciate your guys' um, 
willingness to, to help with this and, and hopefully we can see this forward and we're ready. We got further plans. We've been saving money, so we're ready to invest. It's not something that we need to like get the keys and pause and try to find financing. We have financing ready. We have our schedule ready. We have our subs ready. We got pricing ready. So we're ready to, uh, to really take this and move forward. So thanks so much. Well, thank you for living here, investing here, improving the community. This is an exciting project. Cool. Mr. Mayor, please. Gentlemen, we've talked about bookends in what you've presented tonight, talking about moving the, the train stations now over to this side of Maple and get them away from the railroad tracks that CSX wanted us to do. But your investment in your wishes over this past year have been shared somewhat until the presentation tonight. So we're real excited that you have said, yes, this is where we want our home. This is where we want people to be able to come and showcase our business to potential clients and things like that. So thank you for, for sharing your story tonight. We're real excited about what you will do this year. And, and you're with the right people in working with the team that can say, yes, we can do these things together and help, and help make it happen. Thank you. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, guys. Mr. Mayor, can I just ask yes. a quick question? Thank you for what you're doing. This is exciting. Green door is gone. Um, <laughs> this, the only entrance is off of Maple, is that correct? There are actually several uh, curb cuts um, onto the property. Okay. So there, there, I think there's three on Maple and then one yeah. on East. Oh, and one on East. I yeah. was wondering, what does the back of it look like? Where the finishing shop is and the, is it uh, shipping? What, what does that look like? That's a new addition, correct? And yes. I don't need a lot of detail, but is it windows, parking? There's not much detail at all. It's a block building with a okay. metal roof. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, it's, like, okay. it's like they took a really ugly structure and attached it to a really beautiful historic structure. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and okay. we're hoping to utilize, obviously, the, the nicer portion off maple of the building. Oh, yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Yeah. Perfect. Any other questions or comments? Thank you. Thanks, guys. The chat uh, felt like a Bengals victory, didn't it? That was nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're killing Daniel right there. You know that, don't you? So uh, this is caucus item number six. And, you know, I was putting this presentation together this evening. I thought, man, this is really all great news. Um, so. This is sale of the uh, area around the proposed agave and rye. Uh, the, this is the area in green. It's about eight tenths of an acre. Um, this is what it looks like now, uh, just to give you an idea. So the CIC owns the Legacy Martial Arts on the left-hand side. Uh, the uh, Hamilton um, LLC that is uh, owning the owner of agave and rye owns, owns the former Ritzies. And so what is going to go there? So let me. This is what it looks like now in the green. We get two forward. What we're going to do is the 6,400 square foot building that's in the uh, upper left of that diagram is going to remain with the LLC that's going to build out agave and rye. And the city's going to take control of the parking on the uh, rest of the structure. I think there's about one tenth of the acre is going to be with the private entity. The other seven tenths is going to be for parking. There's going to be 65 parking spaces. And the way this presentation is turning, yeah, I don't even want to show you that, but take my word for it. It's about a $600,000 build out for the parking. And the reason why I think this is important is I think that you'll see in other locations, like I formerly worked in the city of Loveland, and when the city controls the parking, I think that even though there's a, an initial expense that goes along with, I think it's very important for the city to control the parking, especially we know that we're creating a demand for parking. It's important for us to control it. So what this uh, caucus item number six is saying is that seven tenths of that acre minus the legacy martial arts, I need to make that clear because that's gonna be coming to council too later from the CIC once we demo that in the CIC. But that's going to come forward to council but this is to start transferring that parking back to the city ownership does that make sense mm -hmm. yes okay and then finally this is uh, caucus item number seven this is a sale purchase agreement from the cic 
to the city of Hamilton for the property that is going to be, it's about two and a half acres, it's going to be the new firehouse on South Erie. This is the, what it formerly looked like. It's the rallies that the CIC purchased for about $275,000. And there's the other building um, that has already been taken down as well. The city is going to uh, do a parcel consolidation, about two and a half acres. Uh, those properties have already been remediated. They've been demoed. They're ready to go. So what we're going to do is transfer it back to the city, and this is from the CIC. The price of that is going to be CDBG money. Uh, it's about $500,000. That's what this is approving. That's, this is what the site's going to look like. So you can see those two bu buildings are still on this map, but they're gone now. And this is what it's going to be replaced with or something like that. So, I mean, you can see these are three pretty nice projects tonight that uh, it's a pleasure to present to council. Do you have any other questions? Questions? Thanks, Tom. Uh, moving on to agenda item number four will be a presentation by our Director of Resident Services, Adam Helms. Good evening. Last time I was here, we were talking about the resident services supervisor position. This is part of a larger um, kind of getting, letting the dust settle on the resident service department and get things squared away. What I'm here to talk to you about this evening uh, is a code compliance officer number two position. If you look at the screen, we have four code compliance officers so circled in red. Um, when the resident services department was started or somewhere in the middle, um, when refuse and code enforcement came over to resident services, code enforcement came over to resident services, and by code enforcement I mean Cindy Hogg came over to resident services and there were no inspectors. Um, it was really fortuitous timing and allowed our health department to focus on the COVID pandemic. It happened at the same time, so our public health staff got to stay over here and really focus on nursing and everything else. Uh, meanwhile, Cindy Hogg came over with us and we, we had some employees that we had worked up to be our code enforcement officers. Um, from the ground up and she coached them up and now she's back here running our health department. So I'm very excited about this group in the green um, because this is 100% homegrown talent. Um, our code enforcement officers started as grass cutters, seasonal grass cutters. They have seen every aspect of the work from beginning to end and they helped us develop the technology and the processes to do code enforcement that didn't exist before. Um, so I'm super excited about this, this group, and now they're headed up by Marcus Oliver, who also started with us while he was working in college. Uh, he was playing football at Indiana, and in the summer he came and cut grass with us. Um, he ended up working with the Public Works Department and IT. He's got a great background, and now he's leading our code enforcement officers. All of those folks came up together. It's a really great team. What we're creating is a code enforcement officer, too, or what we're asking to create is a code enforcement officer, two position. Um, this basically means that a code enforcement officer has international property maintenance code certification, um, you know, dif no different than some of the certifications that other employees across the organization hold. And it gives them an opportunity to grow from, you know, code enforcement, you know, regular old, enforce, uh, regular old code enforcement officer into code enforcement officer two. It provides a path forward for our employees. It also allows us, God forbid one of them leaves, to go out and hire somebody who's you know competitive in the market. City of Cincinnati pays roughly sixty thousand for a code enfor enforcement officer two position. Um, ours starts at fifty and ranges up to sixty. Um, I do want to oops. I do want to celebrate this group a little bit. One of the things we did when code enforcement came over um, is we assigned them all to. We have seventeen neighborhoods, right? So we split up our four code enfor enforcement officers by neighborhood. So each of them is responsible for four to five neighborhoods. We find that this helps uh, make meaningful and lasting connections in the neighborhoods because nobody likes to get a knock on the door and say, hey, your grass is long. But if it's the same person following up with you, you know, and you have to communicate with somebody, it's the same person in that neighborhood all the time. Uh, we're sending our folks to 17 strong meetings uh, as needed to talk about code enforcement. Um, this is where they're doing the work in the neighborhood. Um, these are the service requests from the inspectors. I, I know this is really hard to see, um, but this is 
the service requests they do or inspections they do by neighborhood. Lindenwald is number one. Um, Enterprise Park <laughs> is a distant fourth. Uh, what I think is important to note here is if you look at code enforcement officer initiated requests, uh, at the very bottom, it's 66% of our requests. So if you think about that, 60% of the like tall grass or you know nuisance complaints that are coming in or that we're finding are our guys finding them, the inspectors finding them. Prior to code enforcement coming over, we didn't have people like actively seeking them out, so we were, we were relying on 311 to kind of be our eyes and ears. And if you look at how many come in via 311, it's 33%. Um, what we've found, here's the type of work that they're doing, but what I want to focus on is that by having our folks be the eyes and ears and being out there making the connections, um, the inspections requiring like the quick strike team us to go out and do the work is down 43%. Our voluntary compliance is up 27%. Um, so like making those connections in the neighborhood, having boots on the grounds and, and, and working with the folks uh, really helps. Uh, one thing I do want to point out, I talked about Cindy Hogg coaching up our folks um, and really teaching us some new processes. If you look at vehicle related service requests in 2020 when we first started versus 2022, um, those are junk vehicles, unlicensed vehicles, permanent lawn ornaments. Uh, we did six in 2020, and this past year we did 422. Um, so those are the types of nuisance issues those guys are out uh, addressing. And that's Code Enforcement Officer 2. Any questions? Thanks. Thank you, Adam. Well done, Adam. Uh, next up for agenda item at number five will be presented by our Executive Director of Public Safety, Scott Scrimisi. Good evening, Mayor, members of Council. Scott Scrimini is the Executive Director of Public Safety. This is similar to the uh, request that Director Wardman had. Um, we're requesting to waive the uh, advertising for the purchase of ammunition. Um, for the past couple of years, we've been having um, supply issues, sometimes uh, the lead time's out 16 months to get the uh, wielder in bulk. Um, <clears throat> Recently, the uh, training staff has come across a vendor that can uh, deliver in bulk immediately. He's got it in stock, and that's what this request is for, is to waive that advertisement. Questions? Questions? Thank you. Thank you. Then mm -hmm. lastly, for agenda item number eight, be presented by our Assistant Director of Engineering, Alan Messer. Uh, good evening. Um, I'm here to talk to you about municipal, some basically a grant we want to apply for for the removal of the G Street Bridge. Um, this is what the kind of an aerial, I think most of you are probably familiar. That's it shown in the kind of hook shape, orange there. Um, the reason it makes that hook shape is because it's a, a very steep rise up and over the railroad. Um, and then this is the condition of it today. Um, the bridge itself scored a, a three on the rating of one to 10, with four being considered poor. It's uh, become a real nuisance to the people in the neighborhood. Um, it's been closed, it's built in 1909, it's been closed since 2008 to traffic. The funding would actually cover 95% of the construction. The design could be covered on a case-by-case -case basis and ODOT actually reached out to the city and made us aware of this funding opportunity. Normally demolition is not covered by this municipal bridge funding. Um, this year they had extra money, and that's a, normally it's 80% coverage by the grant um, because of toll revenue. They're able to take it up to 95% uh, this year and the next couple to three, basically until the money runs out. And they're also on a case-by-case -case basis covering the cost of design for that. Um, unfortunately, it's not eligible for replacement. Uh, it would be if it had been closed in recent years, but because it's been closed for 14, 15 years now, 
um, we can't receive any money to replace it. And we, the city has looked at replacing it in the past. And again, because of that, st the steep nature of what's there today, and actually to meet today's standards, it would have to be even higher to get the required railroad clearance. Um, so it'd be more than twice as long as what you see there today. And if, if you're familiar with it, if you go out there, it's a very odd situation where you have a, basically a, a huge ramp in the middle of a roadway, and it, it's, it's not very aesthetic at all. Um, we're seeking a million dollars from this grant, and we are requesting that CSX participate in it. Um, with that, I'll open it up to questions. Question, how will CSX participate in it? So what we're going to request is that they waive their fee. So normally for a review, and this part's not covered, um, the, the local jurisdiction would pay CSX to review plans. They also have to pay for flaggers. Um, so we're going to ask that they cover that. We're also going to ask that they cover the 5% uh, local match because they have a stake in this too. Um, they've actually done some work underneath it and lowered the rails. Um, so in our opinion, they, they're a partner in this uh, endeavor. I definitely agree there. They should be a partner in this yep. endeavor. Any questions or comments, Mr. Mayor? Please. Alan, can you tell us, would this have to be applied for in calendar year 2023? And that's the hope that the money would, would become available this year? Um, yeah, the hope would be the money would p become available this year, but I wouldn't expect it would be demolished this year. Um, the the applications due the end of February, so I'll come back with the staff report and a resolution at the next council. The um, it, it's really hard to say how long it will take. We did we have plans essentially to demolish it, and we got to the point with CSX of talking about how to go about that and then it didn't proceed because they were <coughs> wanting certain things done in the demolition and that's the other reason that we would be seeking or requesting their participation and actually I'm hoping they take over and we can apply this grant towards it. Um, this year is perhaps the only year that it will be an eligibility for a demolition. It could be again next year. ODOT's been a little ambiguous on how long this offer will say will last. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Mm -hmm. Alan, if we've got the demolition and we get that million dollars and they participate in the 5%, but what about the restoration of the street and everything? Would that be part included? Because we're going to have to do work on the street, paving that and making it secure too, right? Yes, that's all part of the plan. So okay. this, this slide, I skipped through it, but uh, you see the orange on the left is the existing condition. The green would be the final condition, so all that would be wiped away. Um, you'd have just flat ground that teed, have a kind of hammerhead turn around on the west side of the railroad, and then uh, the similar situation on the east side. The green is... is future pavement. And I agree with you going after them to help out because it's going to, it definitely will benefit them on their double stacks and their car carriers to get them through there. So I know that's a big thing that they want that, that gone too. So I think we're at a good vantage point with that. So thank yeah. you. We're optimistic we'll get their cooperation. Yeah, I think so. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. That's the summation of reports, Mayor. Great. I'll accept the motion of the committee. The whole be closed. So moved. Second. Motion by Council Member Nam. Second by Vice Mayor Ryan. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Hearing none, that motion is carried. It is 705. I'll accept the motion that the regular meeting be reconvened. So moved. Second. Motion by Council Member Fear. Second by Vice Mayor Ryan. Roll call vote on that motion, please. Pullman. Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Moeller? Yes. Motion adopted, 7-0. Okay, the regular meeting is reconvened at 7.05. I'll accept the motion regarding the um, caucus agenda. Mr. Mayor. Council Member Pullman. Motion that, with the exception of the items so noted, Council receive the reports of the consent agenda and concur on the re recommendations. Second. 
Mayor and Councilmember Pullman, second member Vice Mayor Ryan. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Hearing none. That motion is carried. We now go to the public hearing section of the agenda. Now set the motion at the regular meeting be recessed and the public hearing take place. So moved. Second. Motion by Councilmember Nab. Second by Councilmember Fear. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Hearing none, that motion is carried. We go into the first public hearing at 706. City Clerk. A public hearing regarding the City of Hamilton's Substantial Amendment Annual Action Plan Update for Fiscal Year 2021 through 2022, delineating the statement of objectives and proposed use of Home Investment Partnership Program, American Rescue Act, Rescue Plan, Home ARP funds and authorizing the submittal of said plan to the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development to amend, transfer, and appropriate up to $1,400,858 for fiscal year 2021 through 2022 for site acquisition, new construction, rental assistance, house uh, housing rehabilitation, CHDO operating expenses, and program administration costs. Anyone in the audience wish to be heard at this public hearing? Anyone in the audience wish to be heard at this public hearing? I'll check the book and see if anybody signed the book. Um, no one signed the book. Anyone on council wish to be heard or make a motion at this time? Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Pullman. Make a motion that the public hearing be closed. Second. Motion by Councilmember Pullman, second by Vice Mayor Ryan. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Hearing none, that motion is carried. That public hearing is closed at 7.07. City Clerk, the next public hearing, please. Agenda item number 10, a public hearing regarding granting a historic designation to the structure located at 577 Main Street, parcel number P64121044, sorry, 4000015, Michaela Tomer, applicant and owner. I'm the audience wish to be heard at this public hearing involving this uh, historic designation. I'm the audience wish to be heard at this public hearing involving this historic designation. Anyone on council wish to be heard or wants to make a motion at this time? Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Vaughn. I move the public hearing be closed. Second. Councilmember Vaughn, second by Vice Mayor Ryan. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Hearing none, that motion is carried. That public hearing is closed to 708. I'll set the motion to regular meeting to be reconvened. So moved. Second. Motion by Councilmember Nab. Second by Councilmember Pullman. Uh, roll call vote on that motion, please. Pullman? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Moeller? Yes. Motion adopted, 7 0. Okay, the regular meeting's been reconvened at 7 08. And then I'll set the motion regarding uh, legislative items. Mr. Mayor. Councilmember uh, Pullman? Make a motion. I move that a note be made upon the minutes that each member of council was furnished a printed copy of each item of legislation prior to its being considered at this meeting. Second. Mr. Mm -hmm. Councilmember Pullman, second by Councilmember Fear. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Post same sign. Hearing none, that motion is carried. I want to mention for the record that public hearing involving the historic designation of 537 Main Street, nobody signed a public speaking book, a public hearing book for that particular item on the agenda. Okay, we now go to pending legislation and agenda item number uh, 11, please, involving a second ordinance, second reading of ordinance involving development plan for Timber Hill. An ordinance approving the preliminary development plan for 116 Timber Hill Drive pertaining to a new multifamily de development project proposed for a vacant parcel of land to be developed as nine separate parcels containing two family and three family structures with separate, a separate parcel as designated open space with three waivers to the Hamilton Zoning Ordinance, second reading. Okay, second reading of an ordinance. Uh, is there a motion on that? Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Vaughn. I move the ordinance be adopted. Second. second. Mr. Councilmember Vaughn, second by Councilmember Lauer. Any discussion on this uh, ordinance? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Pullman? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Moeller? Yes. Ordinance adopted, 7 0. We go to agenda item number 12, second reading of an ordinance involving a plan development and specific use. 
involving a Gold Star drive through restaurant. An ordinance approving the preliminary and final planned development and specific use for 108 North Brookwood Avenue to allow the drive through restaurant Gold Star Chili. Steve Schlagbaum, GSR Brands, applicant, second reading. Mr. Mayor. Council Member Vaughn. I move the ordinance be adopted. Second. second. Motion to Council Member Vaughn. Second by Vice Mayor Ryan. Any discussion or comment on this one? I think, Steve, you're here on this one. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Thank you for your presentation to uh, Planning Commission, and, and we're all really excited about this project. All right. Any other comments? Okay. Roll call vote. Pullman? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nab? Yes. Flower? Yes. Moeller? Yes. Ornance adopted. 7 0. Thank you. We go to agenda item number 13, Secretary of Ordinance involving uh, some zoning and a final plan development. An ordinance amending the City of Hamilton Zoning Ordinance number 7503 by changing the zoning of 625 New London Road, parcel number P64. One two one five six zero 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 four four from R one single family residence to BPD business plan development and approving and confirming the final plan development for the Stephen T Baden uh, High School for proposed parking expansion. Etta Reed, professional engineer for Stephen T Baden High School applicant, second reading. Madam Law Director, is this a, a instance where? Couple of members of council abstain, or do they have to leave the? Uh, they disappear. They they plan to abstain. To okay, so they don't have to leave. Okay. All right. So a second reading of an ordinance. Uh, is there a motion then? I move the ordinance. Up. Oh, I move the ordinance be adopted. Second. Motion by Council Member Vaughn. So by Council Member Fear. Any discussion on this particular ordinance number? Agenda item number thirteen. Hearing none. Roll call. Pullman? Abstain. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Abstain. Moeller? Yes. Ordinance adopted. 5-0 with two abstentions. We go to agenda item number 14, Secretary of Ordinance involving our City of Hamilton Zoning Ordinance. An ordinance amending the City of Hamilton Zoning Ordinance number 7503 by amending several sections, section 1250, Land uh, zoning land use chart section 1300 conditional uses section 1400 accessory uses section 1500 land area setback and density standards section 1600 off street parking section 1700 signs section 1800 residential design standards section 1900 commercial design standards section 2400 plant development regulations section 3500 mobile food service operation section 3900 glossary section 4 4000 administration and enforcement section 4100 board of zoning appeals section 4200 board of zoning appeals Power and duties, section 4500 fee schedule, save Hamilton applicant, second reading. Mr. Mayor. Council Member Vaughn. I move the ordinance be adopted. Second. second. Motion by Council Member Vaughn, second by Council Member Pullman. Any discussion or questions or comments on this one? Hearing none, roll call please. Pullman? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Moeller? Yes. Warrants adopted, 7 mm -hmm. 0. We go to agenda item number 15, second reading of an emergency ordinance involving 126 North C Street. An emergency ordinance authorizing and directing the city manager to execute a purchase and sale agreement and related actions related to certain real property located at 126 North C Street, parcel number P64110070063, Norman A. Jolly, seller, City of Hamilton, purchaser, second reading. Mr. Mayor. Council Member Nab. I move the ordinance be adopted. Second. Motion by Council Member Nab. Second by Vice Mayor Ryan. Any discussion, comments? Hearing none, roll call vote. Pullman? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Moeller? Yes. Or it's adopted. 7 0. We go to agenda item number 16, first reading of an ordinance involving a development plan and a variance. 
An ordinance approving the preliminary and final development plan for 850 South Erie Boulevard pertaining to allow the reconstruction and occupation of the existing building as a new tap room, brew pub, production brewery, and brewery distribution, and with one variance to section 2406E to BPD design standards to allow overhead service doors on facades facing a public street. 850 Associates LLC applicant. Uh, second reading. First reading. Is that correct? There should be second reading. Oh. It says first reading. It says first reading on that. It's a second reading. Right. It's a second Mayor. reading. So it's actually a second reading. Sorry. That's correct. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to a first reading and then vote on it. So that should say second reading then. That's correct. Okay. Second reading of the ordinance. <laughs> hey, the ordinance was read a second time. Is there a motion? Mr. Mayor, move that the ordinance be adopted. Second. Motion by Council Member Vaughn, second by Vice Mayor Ryan. Um, any discussion on this ordinance? Hearing none, roll call please. Pullman? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nav? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Moeller? Yes. Ordinance adopted, 7-0. Good. To agenda item number 17, second reading of an ordinance involving uh, total easement, Tylersville Road. An ordinance authorizing the purchase of a purchase of a uh, permanent utility easement on Tylersville Road, property address 7575 Gilmore Road, from Stephen W. and Barbara Yeary, second reading. Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Pullman. Make a motion that the ordinance be adopted. Second. second. Mr. Councilmember Pullman. Second by Vice Mayor Ryan. Any discussion on this one? Hearing none, roll call. Pullman. Yes. Fear. Yes. Vaughn. Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nav? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Moeller? Yes. Ordinance adopted, 7 0. Go to agenda item number 18, second reading of an ordinance involving a permanent utility easement, Tylersville Road. An, or uh, an ordinance authorizing a purchase of a permanent utility easement at Tylersville Road, property address 7555 Gilmore Road from Fellowship Bible Church, Incorporated, second reading. Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Vaughn? I move the ordinance be adopted. Second. Motion by Councilmember Vaughn, second by Vice Mayor Ryan. Any discussion on this one? Hearing none, roll call please. Pullman? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nav? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Moeller? Yes. Warrants adopted, 7 0. Agenda item number 19, second reading of an ordinance involving a temporary easement, Tylersville Road. An ordinance authorizing the purchase of a temporary easement at 2979 Tylersville Road from Allen W. and Susan M. Stafford, second reading. Mr. Mayor. Vice Mayor Ryan. I move that the ordinance be adopted. Second. Motion by Vice Mayor Ryan. Second by Council Member Pullman. Comments on this one? Hearing none, roll call please. Pullman? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Moeller? Yes. Or it's adopted, 7 0. Go to agenda item number 20, second reading of an ordinance involving purchase of a temporary easement, Towers Hill Road project. An ordinance authorizing the purchase of a temporary easement at Tyrusville Road, part lot number 27120, part northeast corner from James P. and Patricia J. Clear, second reading. Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Pullman. Make a motion that the ordinance be adopted. Second. Motion by Councilmember Pullman, second by Vice Mayor Ryan. Any comments, discussion? Hearing none, roll call please. Pullman? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Moeller? Yes. Ordinance adopted, 7 0. Good to agenda item number 21, second reading of an ordinance involving purchase of a temporary easement, Towers Hill Road. An ordinance authorizing the purchase of a temporary easement at 3170 Towersville Road from Richard B. and Karen S. Hogan, second reading. Mr. Mayor. Vice Mayor Ryan. Move that the ordinance be adopted. Second. Motion by Vice Mayor Ryan, second by Council Member Nab. Any comments? Hearing none, roll call. Pullman? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Moeller? Yes. Or it's adopted, 7 0. We go to agenda item number 22, uh, second reading of an ordinance involving a property exchange with, between the city of Hamilton and CORE. An ordinance authorizing and directing the city manager to execute a property exchange agreement between the city of Hamilton and the Consentorium for Ongoing Reinvestment Efforts, CORE, second reading. Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Nav. I move the ordinance be adopted. Second. second. Mr. Councilmember Nav, second by Vice Mayor Ryan. Questions or comments on this ordinance? Hearing none, roll call. Pullman? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. 
Ryan. Yes. Nab. Yes. Lauer. Yes. Moeller. Yes. Or it's adopted. 7 0. Thank you. We have a new legislation, agenda item number 23, restricting an ordinance involving the structure of 577 Main Street. An ordinance granting a historic designation to the structure located at 577 Main Street, parcel number P64121040000015, Michaela Tomer, applicant and owner, first reading. Thank you. We go to agenda item number 24 for reading of an ordinance following amending a pay range. An ordinance amending Schedule A of the City's Classification and Compensation Plan as set forth in Emergency Ordinance Number EOR 2022-12-123, adopted December 14, 2022, to amend the pay range uh, for the classification of the Resident Services Supervisor, first reading. Thank you. We go to Agenda Item Number 25, first reading of an ordinance involving a substantial amendment to the Annual Action Plan. An ordinance approving the City of Hamilton Substantial Amendment Annual Action Plan update for fiscal year 2021 through 2022, delineating the statement of objectives and proposed use of Home Investment Partnership Program, American Rescue Plan, Home ARP funds, and authorizing the submittal of said plan to the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development to amend, transfer, and appropriate up to $1,400,858 for fiscal year 2021 through 2022 for site, acquisition, new construction, rental assistance, housing rehabilitation, CHDO operating expenses, and program administration costs. First reading. Thank you. We go to uh, agenda item number 26, two readings of an emergency ordinance involving a uh, economic development agreement and 80 acres. An emergency ordinance authorizing the execution of the First Amendment to the Utility Economic Development Agreement between the City of Hamilton and Eddy 80 Acres Investments, LLC, first reading. Mr. Mayor. Council Member Pullman. Make a motion that the rules be suspended and said ordinance be read a second time by its title. Second. second. Mr. Council Member Pullman, second by Council Member Fear. Roll call vote on that, please. Pullman. Yes. Fear. Yes. Vaughn. Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Moeller? Yes. Motion adopted, 7 0. Second reading of that emergency ordinance, please. An emergency ordinance authorizing the execution of the First Amendment to the Utility Economic Development Agreement between the City of Hamilton and 80 Acres Investments LLC. Second reading. Mr. Mayor. Council Member Pullman. Make a motion that the ordinance be adopted. Second. Motion by Council Member Pullman, second by Council Member Fear. Discussion or comments? Hearing none, roll call please. Pullman? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nav? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Moeller? Yes. Or it's adopted, 7-0. Go to agenda item number 27, first reading of an ordinance involving a permanent utility easement, Tyler's Hill Road. An ordinance authorizing and directing the city manager to execute the purchase of a permanent utility easement located within the city of Hamilton, Ohio, Tyrosville Road, parcel number 22U, parcel number P64610570013, Richard B. Hogan and Jean and uh, Doctory, Doctory uh, a NKA Jean, Jean Hogan McClure, property owner, city of Hamilton purchaser, first reading. We now go to agenda item number 28, uh, which is a first reading of an ordinance involving permanent utility easement and temporary easements. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to execute the purchase of a permanent utility easement and temporary easements located within the city of Hamilton, Ohio, permanent easement, Tyrosville Road, parcel number 17U, parcel number P64610570005, Temporary easements, Tyersville Road parcels 17 T1, T2, T3, parcel numbers P64610570005, Richard B. Hogan and Jean and Dockery N.K. Jean Hogan McClure, property owner, City of Hamilton purchaser, first reading. And item number 29, which is a first reading of an ordinance involving permanent utility easement. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to execute a, the purchase of a, of a permanent utility easement located within the city of Hamilton, Ohio, Towersville Road, 7565 Gilmore Road, parcel number 7U, parcel number P64610560029, Felipe P. Oliveira and Allison M. Oliveira, property owners, city of Hamilton purchaser, first reading. Okay. Number 30 on the agenda is a 
Resolution involving an ODOT, ODOT grant application. A resolution authorizing, directing, and supporting the filing of a grant application for the Ohio Department of Transportation, ODOT, Systemic Safety Grant Application. Mr. Mayor. Council Member Vaughn. I move the resolution be adopted. Second. Second. Motion by Council Member Vaughn. Second by Council Member Pullman. Discussion on this one? Hearing none, roll call please. Pullman. Yes. Fear. Yes. Vaughn. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Nab. Yes. Lauer. Yes. Moeller. Yes. Resolution adopted, 7-0. Thank you. We go to agenda item number 31, which is a resolution involving real property, side lot program. A resolution approving the lease of certain real property located within the city of Hamilton, Ohio's urban renewal area to an adjoining property owner as a side lot, 542 Ludlow Street and 1108 Simple Avenue. Mr. Mayor. Vice Mayor Ryan. I move that the resolution be adopted. Second. Motion by Vice Mayor Ryan. Second by Council Member Fear. Comments? Hearing none. Roll call, please. Pullman? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Moeller? Yes. Resolution adopted. 7 0. We go to agenda item number 32, which is also a resolution involving a lease of property, side lot program, Vine Street. A resolution approving the lease of certain real property acquired through the land bank to an adjoining property owner as a side lot, 846 Vine Street. Mr. Mayor. Council Member Vaughn. I move the resolution be adopted. Second. Motion by Council Member Vaughn. Second by Council Member Pullman. Comments on this one? Hearing none. Roll call, please. Pullman. Yes. Fear. Yes. Vaughn. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Nab. Yes. Lauer. Yes. Moeller. Yes. Resolution adopted. 7 0. Go to agenda item number 33, which is a resolution uh, involving side lot program on Chestnut Street. A resolution approving the conveyance of certain real property acquired through the land bank to an adjoining property owner as a side lot, 233 Chestnut Street. Mr. Mayor. Council Member Pullman. Make a motion that the resolution be adopted. Second. Motion by Council Member Pullman. Second by Vice Mayor Ryan. Discussion? Hearing none on this one, roll call please. Pullman? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Moeller? Yes. Resolution adopted, 7 0. The agenda item number 34, a resolution involving some uh, appointments on the Hamilton Civil Service Commission. A resolution appointing Christopher Marichello and Keith Rearing to serve on the City of Hamilton Civil Service Commission for the term commencing January 1st, 2023 and terminating December 31st, 2025. Mr. Mayor. Mayor. Councilmember Nab. I move that the resolution be adopted. Second. Mr. Councilmember Nab. Second by Councilmember Vaughn. Any discussion or comments? Mr. Mayor, I do. Um, I served on Civil Service Commission prior to being elected to our our city council it's an honor uh, to be able to work in behalf of uh, potential staff and work with staff uh, on those decisions that affect people in their job roles for the city of hamilton uh, gene i had the opportunity on monday uh, to to meet with keith ryerling uh, he's very excited to be able to serve on the commission i know mr marciello and his past service uh, has also, has also proven himself to be a great commissioner. Uh, I wanted to thank Bill Groth for his time and service on the commission uh, these past couple of terms that he had served and, and things. And as Keith takes over that role, uh, again, it's such an important part of what we do daily here in the city of Hamilton with staff that uh, work in the civil service team. So thanks very much, everyone. I want to thank Bill Groth also. He served a notable amount of time in that position. and. Mr. Marcello and, and Keith are active in the city, and I bet they're both uh, being involved with the Civil Service Commission. There's no other comments. Roll call vote. Pullman? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Moeller? Yes. Resolution adopted, 7 0. Audience to the city manager or city manager sitting in? Uh, yes, sir. I have a few. Items. First of all, I'd like to thank Meyer Brothers for their uh, investment in the city of Hamilton and their heartfelt comments tonight. I think it's great to hear that and great to see the investment that they're going to be putting into the Maple Avenue corridor. Uh, I'd like to 
I think we've got the chamber annual dinner coming up this week, and I believe that Neil Cohen's supposed to be recognized as Citizen of the Year, so congratulations to him. Um, I'd like to congratulate Gene Pope and the Department of Human Resources for pulling off the Women's Day event that we had here at the City of Hamilton uh, last week. I think it was very well received by our employees. Uh, and then I would also like to recognize the Department of Neighborhoods and all everyone involved with 17 Strong. I attended the community breakfast, celebration breakfast, and that was very inspiring and outstanding. Uh, yes. So all of those things I'd like to put in the record. That was a very good audience, <coughs> city manager. It sure was. Well, thank you. One, of, updated us one of the best in a very long yeah. time. I <laughs> Thank you very much. Quality. You're Good welcome quality. here anytime. <laughs> Audience never City be Council. <laughs> after you guys say that, I'll never be back up here. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, Council Member Lauer. After our meeting of the North Hamilton Crossing, I spoke with uh, Mr. Smith regarding some of the opinions and the concerns of the North End residents. Um, we spoke about minimizing the negative impact on our residents of the North End. Um, I had a little. I had some. A discussion with him. We discussed some different perspectives. Um, Mr. Smith immediately um, began looking at the map. Um, he began to look at other possibilities. Um, today, Mr. Smith and I drove some of the routes and some of the routes that him and I had discussed uh, last night. Um, Mr. Smith, you know this is a very delicate um, issue, um, and I'd like to just say thank you um, and show some appreciation for you that you demonstrated your thoughtfulness in trying to minimize the impact of the North Hamilton Crossing on some of our residents. It is appreciated. There are many residents that have been down there for decades. <coughs> must take their opinions. And I want to add to that, every single council member was at that public hearing, and that's being responsive to citizens. It's listening to citizens. And uh, I think everyone who we all individually spoke with appreciated the time that we spent. Alan Messer did a great job too, answered so many questions and, and was there to, to, to speak about the technical aspects. Uh, Andy Colsar uh, was there. We just, it, the city really, I believe, with ODOT and, and the TID, uh, really did a very good uh, type town meeting type thing. Mm -hmm. But also, those who got the word out about that deserve a whole heck of a lot of recognition because as you met the young lady tonight who went door to door, we had door to door, uh, we had utility flyers, we had signs up in two languages. I mean, every which way you could try and notify somebody, I believe we dotted the I and crossed the T on that. So I thought I was very impressed by that. And I think there's gonna be a lot of good come out of that meeting as far as coming up with a plan, that's like what Councilmember Lauer said, least disruptive, but will accomplish the goals of, of, of that North Hamilton Crossing. Anyone else on council? Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Pullman. Echo your comments there. I was, and right before council, I was watching um, on Facebook, on TV Hamilton, and Steve, I congratulate you again on what a great video you did about the North Hamilton Crossing and Alan Messer and Dan Corey are speaking on this. I think I was, it's probably one, I watched it twice. It was just very informational. I think everybody, if you're going to hang out on Facebook tonight, go to TV Hamilton and watch this video. It was well done. I think there's, you can, um, Alan explained it, Dan explained it very well. And there's also a link to a website there that you can go to and get the updates. And I, I think that's just really makes us very transparent. And I, this I wish this was done actually a little bit um, a little bit earlier because this this was a great video. You look good in it too, Ellie. Did great, man. It's but it was it was well done. And of course, thanks Steve for all this doing stuff like that. So go go take a look at it tonight. It's really good. Watch it twice. It's only five minutes long. So great, Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Nab. I'd like to recognize our high school students who are with us tonight. Uh, what you've shared tonight or what you've, what you've witnessed tonight, uh, this was a very, very formidable meeting. The presentations by our, uh, our leadership team here in the city and what you listened to, the presentation from the gentlemen that are investing in the new business up on, on Maple Avenue, 
uh, some of the extraordinary things we heard about on Main Street that are connectors to get people out to the west side, out toward your high school, and things like that. So we don't take this lightly. The meeting that we had on Saturday uh, that, that Mr. Wordman mentioned of the 17 strong neighborhoods, the meeting that we visited with nearly 300 people on Monday night and listened and understood those conversations that were taking place. Uh, that's what we're here for in City Council, is to be able to understand some of the needs of the community, uh, that nothing is in granite and nothing has been decided. This is going to be a, a long process. Uh, there were some of the people that I visited with on Monday night that thought it was going to be shovel ready and in the ground this year, and that's not taking place. That's why it's important to have these meetings, have these forums, to be able to listen and learn. Pay attention to, as Councilman Eric uh, uh, Pullman mentioned a couple of minutes ago, watch what's what's presented in the presentations that TV Hamilton did and the presentations that our, our engineering team did and ODOT did. They're short videos, but they'll explain more in depth and you avoid hearsay and you'll hear what we understand to be true and what we're looking for in the future and then also the listening events that we'll have in the, in the coming months. Uh, I'm sure we'll be get to getting together again and have another forum similar to what we had on Monday night. Thanks very much. Thank you. I want to say real quick, I want to congratulate Spooky Nook for having the Reds Caravan there Monday night. Happened to be the same time as the North Hamilton Crossing, but I know there had to be at least 500 people because there was a lot of folks parking and walking into Spooky Nook that evening. And uh, I think we showed the manager of the Reds and, and, and uh, the probably future <coughs> Hall of Famer and future major, major leaguer that Hamilton can roll out the red carpet and show people some baseball fans, some real baseball fans in our city. So, all right. Mr. Mayor, can I Please. say one last thing about yes. the celebration breakfast, 17 oh. strong. Um, one of our outstanding citizens was recognized, Andy Welzer, yeah. for his volunteerism within the city. Andy is everywhere. He lives in the uh, German Village neighborhood, but you will find him in any neighborhood in the city of Hamilton doing volunteer work. And uh, it was uh, fun to recognize him, well deserved. So, didn't so Greg Bisdorf get recognized as well? Oh, Greg was yeah, recognized. Greg was. As Tell you well. what, talk about yep. another guy. That's true. Where, Greg was. I mean, he swings yep. to hammer and he listens and he comes to council meetings. So, I'll tell you what, this was a really yep. good weekend the last few days in the city of Hamilton, Ohio. So, all right, anything else? Executive session, Mr. City Manager. Either one of you. I mean, yes, we have a request for executive session, Mayor, um, to consider the purchase of property for public purposes or for the sale of property at competitive bidding if premature disclosure of information would give an unfair competitive or bargaining advantage to a person whose personal private interest is adverse to the general public interest. That is the only There's no other one. I don't have to read the one about economic development, but is there a motion we go in executive session for that stated purpose? So moved. moved. Second. <laughs> Motion made by Council Member, I'm not sure who went first, Council Member Nab, second Flip by. Point, it's fine. <laughs> I heard you both. Motion made by Council Member Nab, second by Vice Mayor Ryan, is that correct? Yes. yes. All right. Thank you. Now, roll call vote on that motion to go in executive session. Pullman? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Moeller? Yes. Motion adopted, 7 0. We're going to go in executive session. Uh, it is 7.38. We're going to actually go in executive session and have it right here in council chambers. Is that correct, yes, other sir. Mr. City Manager? <laughs> okay. So we're going to be doing business in here, but it's going to be uh, private executive session business. So anybody who you want to, have to stay here can stay here, but the rest of you folks, we're just going to be having an executive session and then uh, adjourn adjourning the meeting.